and intro music please Hey. <laughs> if there's uh, ad-libs, ad-libs. let's just let's just hope that the guy who actually did that in the video the guy who's doing the job, yeah doesn't like claim us for copyright or anything but the cat, maybe the cat will do that yeah it, it is fair use though i mean it's <laughs> i mean up to 30 seconds you're allowed to use music yeah. I mean, without without it being copyright claimed but then again led zeppelin's kind of proven that you can't what do you, they made like 30 seconds of that and they got no led zeppelin usually cuts off any uh, usually copyright claims a lot of even youtubers who actually do reviews on their songs mm. led zeppelin not oh. led zeppelin the band exactly but maybe their their team their yeah their Teams their their think team think about it yeah make make a big issue about it okay so guys welcome to the first episode of the sidepod we don't really yeah we we don't we have, we still haven't really settled on that as the name though, have we Okay, what do you want to call it? <laughs> no, let's keep it as sidepod for now. <laughs> sidepod for now, okay. Well, we are here live at Junior Studios with my sound engineer, Nolha, a.k.a. Tanin Sonam. Anything to say? Uh, can I make Karen, Karen? Okay, thanks, bro. <laughs> and so before I start this, I think I just want to... I, can, I, just, I, I just heard a horde of Tanin Sonam fans <laughs> what? cry out. In, it was almost... What's that line from, um, the star, from Star Wars? What was it that? was like... An entire group of people cried out together and then were silenced. When when the planet Alderaan gets destroyed. Never mind, that's like a... It's a Star Wars reference. Yeah, that's a Star Wars reference. But anyway, I just heard a group of Tanin Sonam fans probably freak out about that. Yes, we, we, we hit that new demographic right now. <laughs> so anyways, before I start, I just want to give anybody listening a little context of what a podcast is if you have no idea. So a podcast is just a long... No, I thought that we have no idea was what... Well, I have no idea as well, but this is what my assumption is. Is it is a long, unedited, unfiltered, uncensored, uh, long conversation, not necessarily an interview, which is unscripted, which I feel like most podcasts, at least locally, I've listened to is very scripted-ish, but that's not a shade on them, it's just me. Ooh, you just took a dig. I just took a dig. Drama. Okay. Drama. <laughs> but, he yeah. wants drama. But Come here. back, talk to us about this, all of you. Can I introduce you? Can I introduce you? <laughs> he doesn't want the introduction. No. Okay. So... Without further ado, let me introduce my first guest of the Joe Rogan Experience. Uh, sorry, sorry. The, the, the tom- oh, just kidding. The side part. The first guest, my friend, the song the writer, the singer, the artist, Where? the the what what else? The um, mental health advocates, ad- ad- activist. Are you? No. Oh, advocate. 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 Sorry, of mental health and also disabilities as well, right? And now, I mean, I don't advocate for disabilities. I advocate for people living with disabilities. Living with disabilities, and also now, we have, have has become a writer, come director of a new show coming soon. Get a bay, shameless plug right there. For the further ado, everybody, let's give a round of applause for Killian Pizza. One person clapping. <laughs> no, yeah, I think Norla's going to add the. Are you going to add that? Oh shit! Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I just. Yeah, people. <laughs> Hi, right. how are you doing, man? Uh, good. Weekend. How's the um, weekend going? How's the living? Life? I went to Lung Chutse yesterday, so Lung I'm a little Chutze. bit, a um, little tired from that. Where's, the, where's Lung Chutse? Uh, you go to Dochila, and then from Dochila, there's this uh, tiny little mud trail that goes up into the forests. Mm. It's a really good hike. I, I suggest you all do it. How long did it take? Well, uh, if you're very fit and you're somebody who does hikes on a regular basis, it should take you an hour to an hour and a half. No, it's not that long. But if you're somebody like me, then it'll probably take you two hours max. Okay, that's not that bad. So get an early start if you're somebody who's not really that fit. You know, last year I went on a hike. I didn't go on a hike for four years, and this hike was 14 hours. So wow, which girl was it? <laughs> it wasn't any girl. It was my <laughs> office staff. It's like, hey, guys, let's go for a hike. It's like, is it good? Yeah, it's very nice. We ended up, you know, hiking up only eight hours. Mm-hmm. And by the time we got home, it was like, 8 p.m. We started at 7 a.m. So where was this hike? Oh. Gengel Hatso, Gengel Hatso. I in the, have. It's in Dish, Dishupu. So the 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 tour they saying apparently is the tour life force of up Gengel, mm-hmm. which is in Dishupu. Mm-hmm. It's a very nice place, but then the hike is my god. You know, I've always wanted to try the. Have you heard of the Druk path? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But apparently, about. yeah, I I don't think I'm at the level of fitness that I should be. In order to How long do does it take for the Druk path? A few days. It long. depends on where you start, I believe. Mm. Like there are different points where you can start from, and depending on that, it could take a few days, a few hours. I don't know. I'm I'm not too 
Uh, don't, 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 don't. You can fact check me on this, but I'm not too sure. But I believe, depending on where you start the route from, it, it differs. Mm. Okay, all hiking enthusiasts rejoice. I probably, uh, I think, but these days you can actually see there are a lot of hiking yeah. enthusiasts. I mean, almost every Instagram story that I see has somebody videotaping themselves or filming themselves hiking somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm ash unashamedly, I did the same thing <laughs> you did yesterday. <laughs> I just saw one picture on your Instagram there. It was, it was, I think the part Hagangina. Mm. Was it Hagang over there? It wasn't on Instagram. I sent it to the group. Yeah, okay. You sent it to the group chat. Mm. Okay. Anyways, let's talk about the show, Kile. Okay. So the I good wanna... segue, right? Good segue, right? <laughs> All of us. Good natural segue. Very natural. Okay. So uh, you, you're talking about the conception. So I want to hear more about that. Well, the funny thing is, I actually, uh, when I saw Samu make a post on Facebook and it was like, I think they were looking for show ideas, content stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I just called up Onima, who is the CEO for Samu. And then I just told her, I said, I have this idea for a sketch comedy program. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, I was not expecting her to say yes. Okay. So and you, then you just tried to... I just gave it a go. And then okay. she was like, yeah, I'd like to hear more from it. Then I was like, okay. Then I went to the office the next, I think it was like, the, I had a, we had a meeting a few days later. And then... Uh, well, I explained the idea of the sketch comedy show and she she was really on board with it. And then after that, she was like, drop me a script. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, this is this is happening a little too quick for my... <laughs> I'm, I'm a procrastinator by nature. I don't do things quick. Mm. I take my time with it. So I had a script written in two days, I think. And then I sent it to her and then she liked some of the sketches. And then... There were some that she didn't really approve of, mm -hmm. but somehow we managed to get those into the final cut. So I don't know how, how that happened. But uh, then I wrote her another script and then she liked that. And then before I knew it, she said, OK, I'm going to give you this much budget. Mm -hmm. Start your work. And that was sort of where I kind of I think that, that that's where you start hitting. That is going to yeah, like this, this is happening. This like is happening. this is happening. Uh, it, it's like the day of your wedding when you like realize, oh crap, I'm, I'm going to be married. Oh no, my wife is listening to this. Not that I didn't feel, I did not feel that way, wife. But then, yeah, you know that you get yeah, cold yeah. feet because yeah. now you start panicking. And then the thing is, uh, she said that I would, she did offer if I could, if I wanted a production team to help. Mm -hmm. But then at that point, I think all the production teams that they were partnered up with them occupied were like, occupied with other projects. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, fine, I'll manage it on my own. So first thing I started doing was getting the cast and uh, the cast was not that difficult actually. I just had to ask a few friends here and there. A friend of mine actually recommended you. Well, you told me about that. She yeah. found you extremely funny on your Instagram. I don't know how. <laughs> tell, <laughs> me tell, me kidding, tell me more. I'm kidding. Sai, Sai, tell me more. Sai is a funny person in a very, um, I would say to a certain extent to a Graham, uh, sorry, Norm MacDonald sort of way. But that's very dry, long. No, but that's what I mean. Like, uh, comedy doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, punchline, punchline, punchline. Yeah, it can yeah. also be the most stupid and inane thing in the world, and you could still find it funny. Uh, so you had that sort of, uh, if you had that sort of styling. And Thank I, you. That's I, why I brought you on the show to give me more compliments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you are paying me for them, so yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I sort of like uh, I asked a I asked a colleague of mine who's a, a, a rather a friend of mine who's currently studying in RTC. And she suggested Nima Khandu. Okay. Then Nima Khandu suggested Jichen. Mm -hmm. I came across Sangeet Chafel from a friend of mine who follows his TikToks. Okay. And Pushpa was already somebody that I was quite... Acquainted with. Yeah, and then I thought, you know, she's quite an outgoing person. She's very funny. She's very lively. So I, she was no-brainer. And then Sushi was another one who sort of popped up in my... I just remember, I was like, I need one more girl. And then I, I just remembered, oh, wait, I know one more person who's actually quite good at these. Like, I feel she'd be good at this sort of stuff. And then I gave Sushi a message. And then, lo and behold, she was at, she was willing to. And then next thing you know, we all met up at Elsewhere. Yeah. And then we had that meeting. and I didn't think it was going to kick off that soon, though. Because it was the first time we met. I did not either Luka. until... Um, we like, we don't know when it's going to start. And I was also like... Eh, he's just, those, those type of people, it's not, I don't think it's going to see fruition. But it started quite fast no, from there. Right? I, 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 did, I, I knew it was going to start. What I didn't know was how quickly it was yeah. going to start. It was because <clears throat> we hadn't even done blocking, right? Like I had yeah. given you all the scripts yeah. and I kept editing scripts and I kept sending you all like newer versions of the script, like, yes. like, like subtle edits here and there. 
And then uh, I get a I get a I get called to one more meeting with Samu, mm-hmm. and then they were like, "Did you assemble your cast?" It's like this was I think towards the end of March. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Did you assemble your cast?" It's like yes. They're like, "What about your camera crew?" And by then I had already spoken to Norla. It's an interesting story. About Norla. The first time. That, okay, fine. He's he's gesturing. No, 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 tell the story. He's Come gesturing at me oh, no, the for story. the sanctity of his sanity. I shall not. Come on, I want to hear it now. You guys are already giving me too much, <laughs> teasing me with some shit. Man. Actually, okay, fine. It's just this. So it, I met you all on a weekend. Remember it yeah, was yeah, where? Yeah, yeah. It was around. It was on a Sunday. It was sometime. Oh, that at around five. Him, yeah, yeah, at around five or six, and then I was telling you all that I was like, I need a camera crew, and then Nima Khan oh. was like, I know, a f- I knew a few guys who'd who'd be willing to do it, and then I said, Oh, give them a call, and then all I heard, I I can, I just remember like I was talking to you about something. Mm. And then I could hear Nima Khandu, like I was, I could hear bits and pieces of the conversation that Nima Khandu was having. Mm-hmm. And then Nima was like, "Oh uh, yeah, the guy wants you to like, Ogi China Sholo. Nima Khandu was calling me O at that time. <laughs> and Nima Khandu was like, Ogi China Sholo. And then, all, I don't know what Norla said, but all I heard from Nima's side was, Subara <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, it's the weekend. He's probably out with his friends. So I was like, oh, never mind, it's fine. And then I told, I said, I'll meet him next time. And then I met him the next day and then we sort of sorted out everything. So yeah, end of March, went to Samu, got this meeting with them. And then they're like, okay, you've got everyone? I was like, yeah, I got the cast and the crew. Uh, lights, I'm sure I can manage from somewhere here and there. And we'll th- and then it goes, all right, we need this done by the end of May. I mean, by the end of April. So I was, was like, wait, yeah, wait, wait, yeah. wait, what? And I was like, we need this done by the end of April. I was like, but then the launch is in June. They're like, yes, but we need to like advertise your product. We have to thing ah okay and then I was like okay then I suppose I can start filming (laughs) and then they brought up this contract and it was like by May um, I think it was May the second Mm. they wanted the first cut teacher's day yeah yeah it was on May 2nd I think they were like we want the first cut by May 2nd Mm. I was like okay and then by May 17th or 18th they wanted the final cut Mm -hmm. and then after that all I remember is as I signed the contract, my anxiety just went through the roof because I was like, oh, now it's real. Now, now it's, it's real. real. Like, like, like they've even given me the check for half the amount uh, for the budget to like sort out everything. And then, yeah. And then I think after that, it was, uh, I have a bad habit of um, exaggerating my problems in my head. Mm. I mean, there were a little, uh, there were a few problems here and there, but I think during the shooting process, all in all, it was a learning experience and... It went well. It went better than I was expecting it yeah. to. <laughs> but then, like, you know, how was the experience overall? Like, you having no experience in any of this field, you know? How, how, how do you... How, when you're looking back, how, how was it when you look back? There are certain things I feel I should have focused a little bit on. For one thing, because I can't see, I should be more... I think I'm... within. If, if there is a second episode, I mean, right now we've just released the pilot and... I've already told Samu that we'll only go ahead with the next episode, mm-hmm. ne- the filming and the working on the next episodes if we get enough positive reviews to the point where people actually want to watch the show. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think looking at that, I've kind of realized that maybe I need a, I need to get a, a, a better pair of eyes because my eyes aren't <laughs> no pun my, intended no pun intended but my eyes are not suited to be looking at a tiny <laughs> screen on a camera to yeah. to know if a shot's worked out or not but other than that um the first time we shot which was the first uh, sketch we shot which was um the deal mm-hmm. uh, we're not going to give away anything about it yeah. but then uh we didn't even do shot calls it was we just didn't do. we didn't do shot calls <laughs> And then later on when we were editing, we were like, oh, oh no, which 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 shot was it that was good? Like, they're like, shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four. It, like, someone did a shot 10, 15. And we were like, oh, okay, now we have to, like, sort through all of that and find the best shot. And there goes my phone. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. But And, yeah, all in all, I think um, it's it's a learning experience. Uh, definitely have a lot more respect for people like Solly and Jimmy Tenzin who do this for a profession. Yeah, but then... But then again, you also need to know that this is the first time. So, you know, I think for the first debut... To I mean, you you studied film, yeah, so... Yeah, but then I wasn't there on the first day, no. So, you yeah. guys had to, you know, yeah. had to improvise. I mean, you, 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 were, you helped out during the... the second shoot. Subsequent yeah. shoots. But then, 
Yeah, but I still feel I right now. I, I since we've watched the show, I hope it's good enough for in the eyes of the public. At least the teaser trailer has done really good. I'm quite surprised by how well the yeah, teaser trailer. Yeah, really, like, we got some local celebrities shouting us out, man, organically. See, this is what I what I've taught myself is to expect nothing. So what do you expect once the show is is out for? I have no. I'm. Well, no, I'm just saying. What do you expect? What do you hope for? I hope for it to do well, of course. But at the same time, at the back of my head, I've kept this. I've sort of kept one foot in reality and one foot in hope. Mm-hmm. Where it's like I hope it does well, but at the same time, you expect it I'm better. expecting it, it not to do that well yeah. either. Because sketch comedy is something that's really new to Bhutan. Yeah, explain. Like so I most mean, people for, don't. Yeah. Like I, I've, so, I've had people come up to me and say, "What the show's about?" I'm having. You know, it's funny because the, the first time <laughs> we we released the caricature poster, remember? Oh. So uh, uh, someone told me, "Is it an animation?" No. Yeah, that's what. Like <laughs> so. Uh, shout out to Wang Rana who Wang Rana Gurum who actually did the caricatures of all of us. He did a really good job with that. But what happened was um, because the show is a sketch comedy show and the caricatures are all sketches, people thought that it was going to be animated mm-hmm. or it was actually comedy based around drawings. What really? Because the poster oh, okay. we gave was also caricatures, which oh, yeah, are sketched yeah. out. But we can blame also, no? No, but then uh, yeah, it's not their fault because, like I said, sketch comedy is a it's relatively new in the country. I mean, it, anywhere else in the world, it's sort of got its own, yeah. you know, it's got a good foothold. I mean, back, I think all the way back to like the 60s, 70s, even in the early 40s and 50s, there were people in, during the era of black and white television, yeah, there yeah. were people who were doing, you know, uh, different kinds of comedy on TV and all that sort of stuff. But basically a sketch comedy show would just be a series of uh, short vignettes of comedy which don't necessarily have to connect with each other. Like one story can end and then another story can begin without the scenes connecting to each other. For example, I'm sure a lot of people have watched Key and Peele. Uh, if you haven't watched Key and Peele, you should definitely check them out. But Key and Peele, Saturday Night Live, they yeah. operate on that sort of, on that format, you know, where it's just short, like maybe the longest they'll have is like a 10 minute sketch. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like it'll be like two minute sketches, three minute sketches and and the point of it is that it's just there to be silly and absurd. Some of them can be satirical. I think Dave Chappelle does a lot of um, satirical sketches. Yeah. And some of them have to have absolutely no meaning. It can be absurd. It cannot be rooted in reality at all. I think there was one which I actually really love uh, by the by by the comedy troupe Monty Python, where it's called the Ministry of Silly Walks. I yeah, think I've yeah, showed, yeah, showed it to you. It's absolutely... It's one of the best sketches from them that I love. And it's completely insignificant. As in, like, it has no meaning to it. Is Monty Python, like, regular sketch shows? Like, the, how many sketches are there in one episode? Um, I think Is they had a, a few long... seasons. They had, like, a season. Like, they had, like, quite a few seasons. On the same bit, what? No, they would have... Uh, so, within Monty Python, you've got various sketches again. So... Mm-hmm. I think uh, they have the the cheese sketch, mm-hmm. which is another one which is absolutely again has no Me. no rhyme or reason to it. Okay. Then there's so they used to also have season based where one episode would have like four, five, six sketches, and then the next episode would have another number. So it it keeps going, and then I think they had like up to like season. I, the last I saw on Netflix, I think they had like six or seven seasons, oh. and they they did quite well and. And it's it's typical. I think uh, it it is very. Um, there are some bits which are very anti humor. Mm-hmm. Then there are some which are like absurd, surrealist, and yeah, yeah. It's 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 an experience that I think everyone should check out. Like even if you right. aren't really into that sort of comedy, just to, I think you should just check out some of what Monty Python have come up with. So, I think your main influence was Monty Python. Oh yes, I love John for, Cleese for the. For this show, John. yeah, John Cleese is. Uh, he he was one of the Pythons. One of I the didn't even know he was, you know, in that Monty Python show because he was so young. No, I only know him. From yeah, we all know him James, like James Bond. That's movies. what we all know him from James Bond, where he plays Q, yeah. or I think from Pink Panther too. Oh God, God awful movie that was. Well, I, mean, I watched him when I was young. So it didn't. <laughs> no, uh, Pink Panther two is not. I mean, so part one was funny, but I think the original one with um, I forget his name. Uh, Steve. Martin. Peter Sellers. Yeah, Peter, Peter Sellers. Sellers the, the original one. Yeah. yeah, that's that's quite hilarious as well. I didn't. Know, I didn't watch the old ones. But... No, but then like uh, I think after I watched Monty Python, I was interested in doing something along the along that vein. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do comedy that didn't make sense. 
that doesn't rely too much on physical humor. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does rely on physical humor at certain parts, mm-hmm. but then it's more to do with it. It deals more with just having no sense to it, mm-hmm. and. I think some of it did come out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> yeah, we got some more outrageous ideas for the next ones if we do make them, right? Mm, I've got a bunch. Yeah, let's see how 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 far across the line we can flirt with <laughs> before, without crossing it. But then now that you've asked me about my experience, the interviewee should interviewee. become the interviewer. Ooh, look how the turn tables have t- t- turn tables changed. T- <laughs> t- tables around. That's an office joke, by the way. Yes. Um. So you are one of my. Um, characters yes my actors yeah and one thing that i actually had to keep explaining to everyone was that there is no such thing as a main role in yeah, sketch yeah. comedy because everyone keeps changing yeah, their role so there's no such sketches. thing as a main so yeah but uh, that that's just a sidebar there but yeah well, how was your experience with it like you actually like i always wanted to do something like this like i have already have my instagram and my facebook page making my stupid videos so like I always thought like wow if we could we have a, like an actual show, that that's one of my you know mm. dreams I wanted to do. So by this show, no, uh, was actually a dream come true, man. To be honest, because oh I feel so yeah it is a dream come true. <laughs> not to be too you know emotional about it, but then this show was always something in my back of my mind like oh I wish there's something we could this we could we could make in Bhutan, and then now it's finally becoming a reality. It's going to be out, and then you know. I always said in the back of my mind, when I told my mom, like, I had, I had one friend approach me with this idea and blah, blah. She, I just told her, like, the least thing I expect out of the show is I just want it to be shot, done, and then out for the public. And then whatever happens after that, then whatever happens. Mm-hmm. And if it's good, then we'll make more. If it's bad, then at least we give it a shot. So, yeah, I think that's the that's the mentality yeah. we all sort of went into it. Yeah, and I think it was the best thing was, I think all our cast members are very down to earth humble people yeah we they were really got, we don't, got, we don't got egos so we don't got like, divas on the set and then not yet anyway not yet anyway so <laughs> who knows what if this does really yeah. well and the fame goes to their head and then yeah, okay or we could go there yes, complete let's not go for that yeah. <laughs> but then yes and especially Gile, you and I we have the same sense of humor we can talk about comedy for like hours and hours mm-hmm. so the, all the sketches really fell in tune with my mm-hmm. type of shit that I do so this was a, this was a blast making this show and then hope we can make more episodes and hope people enjoy it. That's my, that's the, that's my experience. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's all we can really hope for though. But yeah. And, but then I think, I, I think if, if, if there are people who listen to this podcast, if they listen to the At side part, we might get one, two or two yeah, of our if you friends. Still, yeah, if you still haven't, Hi guys. <laughs> if you still haven't understood what sketch comedy is, I think we, we would urge you to go check out some on YouTube. There are so many amazing sketch comedy shows out there. And we're just trying to bring a more Bhutanese localized flair. I mean, I think one of the things we succe- succeeded in was making the sketches a little... Bhutanized? Yeah, a little, est- like, have some Bhutanese quality to them. Yeah. yeah. I want to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, let's hope that everyone watches the show, at least, even if they don't like it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Give it a try. That's all we're asking. Okay. That's, I mean, that's without, we, without, without coming out too desperately. Please give it a watch try. it. Please watch it. Come on. We need money. Of course, uh, of course, you should also subscribe to Samu. I think Samu's doing a really good job with the amount of content they've got. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, if you've been paying attention to the trailers they've been releasing, there's actually quite a lot of interesting original content yeah, coming Yeah, we've got the Bhutanese romantic series, uh, B-drama, first B-drama coming up. Isn't it a K-drama? It's K-drama. It's, it's a, a Bhutanese, no, it's, it's a, a Bhutanese, Bhutanese K-drama. style K-drama. K-drama. B or drama. B drama. Yes. Barma. Barma. Yeah. <laughs> Barma. Barma. What is, it? is that a word? Bhutanese word. Barma. Brahma. Brahma. Never mind. Okay. Let's. let's I mean, we've got B pop. Might as well stick. Yeah, B, that's what I'm saying. Stick B drama. In front of it's everything. a B drama show. Hmm. Any other series coming out? There's an animation series that they were. Yeah, yeah. Tutu to Takin. Kid, kid show. Yeah. Kid show. And we got. Uh, I think there's a, Tankers Getaway show. Is it a series or is it is like a documentary? I. The, the girl in the nomad, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a documentary series. Mm. The bound- series? Yeah, uh, sorry, oh. it's a documentary. I'm not yeah, sure if okay. it's a series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually don't read the captions all the way through because my eyes start to hurt after all. Else, so it's just like, just look at the picture, look at the title. It's like, okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay. Mm. Segway! Let's segue. <laughs> also, let, there's something I want to talk to you about. Uh, last time I recommended you the show, mm-hmm. Solar Opposites, you watched it. How yes, was I loved Solar Opposites. How was the C plot, man? The C plot. You know what? The amount of gratuitous gore 
That sure has. In every episode is something that I live for. Like, um, I do love uh, very violent humor as well. Mm-hmm. Things that shouldn't be funny. Like, dark humor is one of my favorite things. And I think Solar Opposites is just one of those shows that has such amazing dark humor to I, it. I think we, no, not many people know about the show. Give us a little concept, background on Solar Opposites, man. Okay, so... Um, it's made from the same guys who made Rick and Morty. Who, yeah, who made Rick and Morty. And Justin Roiland is another right, amazing... Right. I mean, he's an amazing voice artist, but at the same time, really good writer. Yeah. Uh, I really think the, the the he's, he's got some really original concepts, which I love. I mean, Rick and Morty is, an, is on its own... Uh, a show that has absolutely no meaning, but at the same time is so jam packed with, with like Philosophy. subtle <laughs> philosophical things to it, which I don't know if they intended or didn't intend. I it's think just they something. Didn't yeah, intend, there's a lot of existential. Yeah, stuff there's a lot of existential uh, existential. But anyway, so so are opposites. So Planet Schlorp was this utopia. <laughs> you want to whole intro <laughs> intro. So basically, there's this planet called Schlorp, and there are these um, aliens on this planet, and then what ends up happening is a meteor strikes. Or was it a meteor? Uh, an asteroid. An basically, asteroid. They're Superman. <laughs> yeah. So they they basically flee to Earth because their planet gets destroyed, but then there are four aliens and their pupa. So what's a pupa? <laughs> Uh, I mean, if at this point, if you don't know what pupa is, maybe bio, maybe high school wasn't really for. I mean, um, school wasn't really for you. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> fired. But so these aliens, they are on Earth, and it just. I think it's a beautiful look at how the idiosyncrasies of humans. Mm. I mean, these aliens are some rather weird ones as well. But at the but same they get time, into the, they get into the human. I mean, like I think also. one of them does. Right. Actually, two of them get really into the human culture, which is uh, Terry. Is it uh, Terry yeah. and Jesse? The kids? No. Uh, the the two the adults. The the one of the adults mm. and the kid, the girl kid. Mm. They get really oh, into yeah, human culture. Get... Whereas, um, I keep forgetting his name. Corvo. Corvo. Yeah, Corvo. Corvo and the the male alien, the male child alien. Yeah. They are like completely against. And I, I really enjoyed like how it's sort of, it's a really good medium, well, personally, what I felt was that it was a really good medium to study the like how humans can behave because every day they're going through like something or the other. And it's like this entire foreign appeal like of how a, probably if a race of aliens did come to Earth, they'd probably go through the same thing that these four aliens are going through because... Let's face it, humanity is a, it's, it's a weird show. <laughs> it's a show, actually. They made humanity a show. Yeah, they made humanity a show. and Literally I Literally in the, in the, the wall there. The you know, the like, wall, that's my favorite part. Yeah, of the, the, wall, the wall. I think, but that's the why wall. I didn't want to spoil the C plot for you, for that reason. So I think it's best we don't, like, for those who have But it, it's it. in the show. It's, it's in the show yeah, within that's the what, show. And, that's what, it's like a show within a show. That The thing going on with the pupa is another interesting Yeah, thing. we don't know. Also, no. <laughs> it goes, this is one part where it goes, like, this full-on, like, Inception, sorry, like it starts like telepathically communicating. I mean, spoiler alert, but you know what? I really don't care. You're still going to enjoy it if you do watch it. So like it goes up to this human and then it like mind meddles with her. And then she's like, oh, yeah, the she's, like, really she's like, I'm going to die soon. And I can't remember my mother's face if you could. And then like this pupa like shows her mother. Hello. Uh, hello. And like the pupa's got this really like big, like oh, um, basic voice. Basic yeah. voice. And then finally she's like, thank you so much. You showed me my mother. Is there anything I can do for you? And then all the pupa asks, like, there is a cabinet in the kitchen. Reach up for it. Open it. And there is a Harry Potter whistle. Get me that Harry Potter whistle. <laughs> and I... That entire sequence is like such a trippy psychedelic sequence, and that's what I mean. Like it's it's comedy for the sake of just making you laugh. Like it doesn't have any meaning to it. Like this alien literally shows this dying woman her mother, who she hasn't seen in so many years, and all it wants in return is a Harry Potter whistle. <laughs> but that's the, the basis of that show. I mean, it's very. I can't even explain what it is. But I mean, it's, it's, it's enjoy it's, it's, it. Yeah, it's enjoy called. It. Yeah, just enjoy it for the sake of like. I think um, what's great about it is that there is an overarching element like throughout yeah, the yeah, seasons, yeah. throughout the story. But then at the same time, every episode is a standalone episode. Yeah. Like Which you is get like Rick and Morty as well. But Rick yeah. and Morty, we don't know where, where it's going towards. Yeah, and I think the fifth season's coming out this yeah. June, so looking forward to that yeah, as well. Yeah, that show sure. yeah, is my it's my fave. But yeah, I um I think. Uh, if if solar if you are somebody who watches Rick and Morty or Solar Opposites, then the kind of humor that's there, yeah. we are trying to we're not doing a good job of <laughs> emulating it, but that's the kind of humor that we're also we're trying to go. Somewhat for. on that 
Kocsla category, maybe, mm. if so. Okay, what do you want to segue? What do you want to segue to? <laughs> okay, one other thing, another thing I wanted to talk about, which is something I think we can talk about for a good bit is how many rape cases have we seen this this week, man? So many rape cases. Yeah, and the worst part is, I think, um, firstly, uh, paraphr- uh, prefacing this by saying that we are not lawyers or cops. <laughs> We do not understand. <laughs> Disclaimer. Yes, like this is just purely based on what we feel. But um, the Panbang case, mm. the 16-year-old girl. Which one was that now? The 16-year-old girl with the 20-something-year-old dude. Um, that was, that, that, I, I'm, I'm, I, might, I might be getting the details wrong, but what thing is, people, because uh, uh, it's this, you know, statutory rape, right? You, yeah. You understand what, yeah, what yeah. I mean by so this guy who's uh, who's I think in his early to mid twenties. I'm not sure. I haven't. Uh, I can't remember. I can't recall the details. Maybe you can look it up. They had a relationship. Maybe. Yeah, they then... had a relationship, and I think they they had they had sex. And so that's being treated as statutory rape, which actually, according to the penal code, is correct. What is our age of consent in Bhutan? Eighteen. Eighteen. Yes. Until Sixteen. No, it's eighteen. It has to be eighteen. Okay. And I personally think it should be eighteen. Yeah, I also think. You know, in Japan, it's thirteen. Crazy, right? It's Japan. <laughs> I love the country. It's got some weird things to it, though. Not for the 13-year-old's age of consent. Though. That's that's definitely not that's one thing that I'm into. Bonkers, no. 13, okay. Anyways, let's not talk about that. But yeah, yeah, but then, so... So this news breaks out, and I immediately go into the comments, and I see people writing stuff like, it's consensual because this 16-year-old agree. No, no. But then what I think... Um, uh, firstly... A lot of us are still living in, we, we we have a hard time letting go of certain things we grew up with, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of our older generation still don't, are still sort of op- having a, they're still sort of uh, new to what's what the new laws are. and um, But then at the same time, consensual sex, even if it's a 16 year old, it's an adult, it's a person, she's having sex with somebody who's older than her, like who's above the age of 18. And regarding that, that's such a, tricky situation because if you're 16 years old you are not you know you can't legally give consent you don't have you're not mature you're not yes you're not legally an adult so Mm -hmm. you can't actually give and on top of that it's a person who's above the age of 18 Mm -hmm. and it's kind of it's 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 such a tricky thing to deal with because look at it this way um if you say that a child at 16 years old can consent right yeah then why why shouldn't you also allow her to drink? Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't you allow her to vote when she's 16? If the law is said that 18 years is the legal age, like you become an adult legally at 18, right? So by that logic, this 20 year old, mm-hmm. she may have consented to it, but since he is the elder person, it is in his thing to say no. No, or not push towards it either, you know, and this is where I think it's it's such a tricky subject because um like I said we're not I'm not a lawyer and I don't understand it but for me the legal age is 18 and whether or not a 16 year old consents mm-hmm. whether it's a boy or a girl I think if you're the the person who's the elder one they should have enough thing to say no yeah but that's the thing no case what I feel like before I used to think that rape happens because many of the the, the the predators are not educated enough to know better to do that. But then the scary thing is there are so many cases of sexual assault and it's mainly, it's, then a lot of them are people who are educated. So I don't think it's education is the problem for all these rape things, rape young cases. Mm. I mean, it is still, in our case, it's also, it, there is a little bit of, uh, I don't know so much about, but I'm sure you've heard of night hunting, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that also sort of, feeds into it i think there is um but night hunting apparently the origin was it wasn't supposed to be something like creepy or like for, yeah yeah you know it wasn't for supposed sex or to shit be. like that but basically it was something called night courtship or something i heard like that like where you meet somebody in the village who you're in you know you which you, you have a little attraction to and then you, you plan a meet at night because mm-hmm. the village is very like conservative so that's the only time you can be uh, together privately mm. but then it became to this, you know, put on modernized. Then it became to the air. You cannot play night hunting the jungle. I assume the easy. So I think that kind of notion has changed. But I think at its origin, it wasn't supposed to be something like, like what it is, you know, perceived by right now. Mm. I'm not too sure about that. I don't know too much about it. I haven't delved too deep into mm. the, 
into the um, I'm not even going I don't, into the into night hunting. I I honestly I don't know. It's such a tricky subject to deal with currently. All I know is that if a person is not 18 and you are above 18, just don't. And just don't kids get no no kids dudes don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not only dudes. I think even there are some cases yeah, yeah, where yeah. where women also mm. uh, you know rape or have have relations with younger men mm -hmm. and that's that's the same thing here just because it happens to a woman doesn't mean it can't happen to a man as well yes. so when it comes to this sort of stuff i think both young like young men young girls and boys be very careful and if you're somebody above 18 years old and you are in having a relationship with somebody who's below that cut that cut that stuff like like nip it in the bud <laughs> like But like, it take some responsibility. So what I'm so astonished about is like, how many cases are happening. This week alone, I read three, and one of them, the the, the most f famous one, was the 13 year old girl, the 12 year old, 12 -year -old girl getting pregnant. No, see now that that is that's oh, again that's again that's, again, age, that's a know. child because according to the law, six, 12 and above, yeah. 12 and above, but below 18, you are a minor, and I think 12 and below, you're a child. Oh, so this is so this is kind of a, yeah, and then the and then the person who 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 raped her is a thirty five year old, mm -hmm. and unpack f from that what you may. <laughs> and yesterday I read this in Kinsel. I don't know, I have the numbers straight, but then it, it, I think actually, said, but I loved um, uh, Chimi Nangsel, a friend of ours. Yeah, she had written a rather interesting uh, email to the yeah, people yeah, at BBS, IG. I think. That's right. And I think that was such a good thing because we have to be very careful with, with the, the kind of we, words yeah. we use. I mean, um, censorship is telling people not to use a certain word, of course, but then I think when you're dealing with disseminating information, mm -hmm. like when you're a media house, mm -hmm. you have to be very careful with what sort of language you use yeah. because language is powerful and the using the wrong word can send a... Com using one word can send a completely different, you know, meaning. Mm -hmm. And I think that 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 that, that the calling 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 out our media houses on that regard is quite is it's quite important. I think we need to. Yeah. Did uh, did BBS and Kinsel change their the story after that? The draw was a pushback from the people. Uh, not that I know of, but um, I hope they do. No. But then again, uh, ethical journalism states that even if you do release a story like mm -hmm. that, you shouldn't delete it. Oh. You never delete it. You release a statement oh. saying that yes, we fucked up, <laughs> and here is the what we meant. This is what we meant. Okay. This is and here is a, a correction, you know, mm -hmm. and that actually what it does is it it puts credibility on you, mm -hmm. because what happens when you delete it? Then you just then you basically it's like you took a shit, but then you don't stand by your shit. Mm -hmm. So what we're, what you're basically saying is like, yes, say that you admit that you made a mistake with the learn from it, uh, learn from it, rather than and to like show you, yeah, the, rather the, than the, hide, the rather the than shit. cover that up, I think it's important to send release a statement saying that yes, we made a mistake here, and go forward from there. Cool words of wisdom, man. Words of wisdom. Well, that's that's <laughs> that, that uh, like during the pandemic, uh, during the first lockdown, um, I think uh, the government had issued some Coursera courses, like some, we could sign up for some Coursera courses, yeah. thanks well, to the Ministry of... What kind of, what kind of courses? So I had actually taken one on ethical journalism. And oh, so that's what you learned. Yeah. yeah, so that's one of the things that I found very interesting. And um, I think there are a few journalists who do follow that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, I think it's really important to never delete something that you've already released into the ether. Mm -hmm. Rather make a statement saying that, yes, we kind of made a mistake with this one. Mm -hmm. Apologize for it. Yeah. Thank the readers who are making the correction yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. you, you But then again, doesn't mean that you do that with everything. Huh? Like <laughs> sometimes, <Oopsie. laughs> sometimes you're just going to meet people who are not going to agree with yeah. whatever you write. But I think this time it's been quite. Yeah, with though. this time, I think that it's it's kind of important to know what sort of language you're using. Yeah, the majority of the public is not actually uh, accepting. But then again, we still have that small um, group uh, saying that it's it's consent, which is bullshit. You know. So, uh, you, like I said. We still are a generation, we, we, our, like, literally the, the current generation, like, you are in my generation, mm -hmm. we are the only one, I think, before that, our parents' generation, majority of them are still, you know, living in that era, and it, you can't also fault them for it, 
I mean, I think it's important for them to like grow and yes. learn about it. But at the same time, you can't fault them because one thing you learn is that when you are taught something from a very young age mm -hmm. and that thing is reinforced over and over again, mm -hmm. it's really hard to change that wiring later on. Mm -hmm. So you have to also not immediately dismiss them as being oh bigoted and all that sort of stuff. You have to understand where they're coming from as well mm -hmm. because they come from a different yeah. mindset. Especially in the East, people still, you what, know. They have like what the old guys marrying the young kids and stuff like that. No, what I mean is like, Eastern part of the country still does have, still is not, um, not by any fault of their own, of course, but the Eastern parts is still very, uh, what do you, what's the word here? Um, what? Very rigid in their beliefs. Mm. They're very rigid in their beliefs. So it's going to take some time, but I think rather than shouting them down and saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, because at the end of the day, you're just going to blow out your own voice. So, so I think it's there. it's education is very important. I think it's important for people to be and even on their side, mm -hmm. it's important to be open minded, to yeah. be willing to listen to somebody. Mm -hmm. I think right now what's happening is everyone's just shutting each other down all the time. It's yeah. like my opinion is correct. I I you know have this this so and so degree, so I know better than you. Of course, no one's debating that you don't know better, but there are certain things which are socially and culturally ingrained in us which is very difficult to get i'm not by any means trying to justify what these people are saying mm -hmm. but i am trying to explain hopefully sort of explain where it comes from it comes from very old and strongly held beliefs from a very from a different time so i think it's very difficult to just expect them to change overnight you know you have yeah, to yeah. you have to make an attempt at understanding them and then trying to like slowly empathize with what they what they the way they think and then slowly veer them away from that but it's a huge group though because yesterday i checked on cancer there was like oh no it's not going to 200 cases of teenage pregnancy 237 cases oh, no, yeah, of teenage in, pregnancy. in the last year i think yeah in 2020 yes. that's a, that's so a, that's what i'm saying you know, God, um, you know it's we are failing somewhere um we, don't, we can pinpoint. We don't. We, yeah, maybe, no, that, maybe, that, I think we don't see it as yeah. often in the urban areas. Maybe it's happening so much more frequently in the in, in the rural parts. We just don't see it. So we cannot fathom know how mm -hmm. they think. But maybe there is like a culture where it's like accepted. I feel. Yeah, probably, like I said, it's 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 ingrained in us. I mean, I mean, um, my uh, grandmother who's. Mm -hmm literally two generations removed just mm. two generations mm -hmm. she got married very young how old was she when she got married uh, definitely a teenager <laughs> <laughs> definitely a teenager so yeah like, that's what I'm saying like it's it's ingrained in people and it's difficult to veer away from that you can't expect them to change overnight you can't shout them down at the same time to them just as much as you believe that what they're doing is wrong mm -hmm. they also have that same thing that what we are doing it's is wrong, wrong to them well. so right. It's really difficult, but I think what's important is um, when it comes to this sort of discourse is to understand where each other is coming, f where each of y'all are coming from, sort of because there are so many aspects that we don't understand and we can't fathom at the same time. So it's really difficult to really be like, this is the cause of why you are like this, you know, like it's it's too many factors. Must be some research done, no? especially, but I had one friend who was in, who interned in Renew. And mm -hmm. she told me like the alarming cases which are not reported. I think it's it's everyone's duty to work towards it. You just can't expect one organization to deal with it. It's you just, you just can't expect NCWC and Renew to completely end Rape. domestic <laughs> violence and child abuse and you know. You Rape can't, is all. <laughs> you can't you can't always expect the cops to only be the ones who come and help a person who's you know. Mm -hmm. It's everyone's job. We all have to educate ourselves, learn, um, and yeah, just just all in all, try not to be shitty to each other. <laughs> shitty. Okay, so uh, let's uh, call it a show. Thank you, people. And by people, I mean like three people who have listened to this show. Aren't you being a little too ambitious? With okay, me? two people. Thank you. you Still too ambitious, but okay. <laughs> for listening to our show. And uh, please uh, catch our show on Samu. If you don't know already, now you know it's Keda Bay. It's only a joke, people. It's only a joke. And uh, we got Tanisam in parting words. Ah, can I make Carol? Carol. Me, I'm music video. I'm not. 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 I